We will now talk about how we can use the Twitter API to search for a topic. By the end of this video, you should be able to request Twitter search results using Python. Use a Python for loop and list lookup to filter duplicates and inspect a JSON data structure. In the next live coding session, we will use the Twitter API to search for tweets related to sp specific topics or hashtags. We will see that each tweet is not only a 140 character string, but also comes with many other information related to it. Those are the keys of the dictionary of each tweet, so each element of the statuses lists in the notebook. We will use these metadata to extract interesting information about tweets that we receive in response to our search query. Let's switch to the notebook to review this. So we are back in our notebook, and now uh, we will um, search for some trends. If we go up, one of the trends was, um, let's say, here, um, Flashback Friday, or did we have Endangered Species Day? Right, let's go with that. I'll get this hashtag and look for uh, tweets associated to it. It's definitely a trending subject today. Here we had MTV Awards. We can go back and see if that's still a popular subject. Um, so here I'll say that our topic is Q. Um, or we can name this topic if we want it. So there is a search that tweets under the Twitter API. So we can search for tweets and one of the arguments for it is the topic. I'm going to quickly change that to topic. And the other argument is the count of tweets we want back for the function to return. And we store that in a variable called number. OK? So let's see what we get as statuses, Twitter statuses, for Endangered Species Day. So running this. It should give us that statuses um, list or object. Um, and we can find the length of it. We indeed got 100 tweets back for that. This function returned all the recent records it finds up to a max of the count, which was number uh, in our case. Uh, let's switch now back to MTV Awards. Um, and just in case I used Q later in the notebook, I'll switch this topic to Q. And this was our MTV Awards. OK, uh, let's see if MTV Awards, since it's not a trending sub topic, uh, will give us less number of uh, records, or if we are going to be able to get 100 for those. Um, fair enough, we got 100 records also for MTV Awards. If maybe our number was larger, uh, we would get less. Uh, another thing Twitter does when it returns these statuses, actually before that, let's look at those statuses, what we got back, right? And we, we get a bunch of records for each tweet in JSON format. Uh, it was created, I say, May 19 at 7.30. And it's a retweet and things like that. There are lots of metadata here about the particular tweet, including the text for that tweet. Um, but there, I'm sure there are some duplicates in this list. So because Twitter often returns duplicate records on a subject, um, we need to use a for loop to clean the data here and create a slice of the data called, uh, in this case, for the unique statuses. So we'll call that statuses. Um, so what we are doing here is um, for each status, for each S, um, if the text is not in all the text, we are keeping all the text. And if the same text of the tweet, which is the tweet message, is not in already in that all text that we are keeping track of, 
we are going to append that to filtered statuses. And in the end, um, when we are done with this for loop, we'll assign this filter statuses to statuses that um, um, object we had uh, as the response from Twitter before. We had hundreds, remember, in statuses. Now let's look at its uh, length. We have now 58 messages, so 42 of them were dropped because they were duplicates. We can also uh, display the statuses, all these text um, using slicing out um, the text from the statuses object, the search results. Uh, but also, we can use, since this was in JSON, we can use the JSON dumps again. Right? The first status in there, um, we can actually pretty print it. And as you see here, text is a lot more clear. Had so much fun at the MTV Awards and things like that. It was a retweet. Um, if you just use it as a JSON object, there are lots of things you can do with it. Um, at this point in the next cell, we see that there are statuses and it's a data structure that we need to know before we, we can move on. So please stop the video. We are going to end our video um, in a few uh, seconds um, and explore with the data structure. For example, if we wanted to get the retweet count or retweet it, we'll just take those out. We'll use those fields as the index and we, we'll be able to get those out. And remember, we retrieved some records for MTV awards, and uh, we'll use those to extract the text, screen names, and hashtags for all these records into lists. Uh, so please stop the video, and we'll continue when you come back. OK, so hope you're back. Now we are running our example six. We'll use, again, the text, screen names, and hashtags for all these records, and we'll assign them to lists. We'll call the first list status text, so status text for all statuses, right? Screen names will be the next one, user mentions, screen name, and the for status, all statuses, and hashtags. Uh, we definitely um, want the hashtags to keep track of them. Um, we are using the data structure for retrieving the data from the tweet records, just as a summary. Uh, the third listed here, uh, or fourth, is interesting because we are splitting the message to create a list of all the words. You've seen this in the bag of words. Here we are just um, using uh, the split function again uh, from the uh, string class. Running this. In the next code cell, we use the JSON dumps to display the first five items for each list. So uh, please check out the output to get familiar with these lists. So the first one will give us the status text that we just sliced out. The second one will give us the screen names that are mentioned. The fourth one will give us the hashtags. And we remember, we searched for MTV awards, but there are other hashtags related to um, these tweets as well, so we also get um, those ones. And the last one here uh, will give us the words uh, in some of these tweets. Um, next, we'll find the frequencies um, of these words. Uh, but first, let's move on to the next video and review what we mean by frequencies and what are the techniques we'll be using for that.